workflow, or die. This video is all about the systems that you're going to want to put in place for the long haul of your channel. Now, a word of warning, I'm about to give advice that I myself either don't yet take or didn't take at the stage where you are now. That's not me being hypocritical, that's me being honest and trying to convey to you something that I wish I had known earlier, or at least advice I had wish I had taken earlier. Before we dive into all of the sort of Martha Stewart level precision that I'm going to introduce to you when it comes to workflow for your video, I want to let you off the hook right away and say that this is a process, that the workflows I'm going to talk about are ones that you should strive to implement in an incremental fashion, and that it is totally fine and totally to be expected if at the beginning of your channel, you're operating in a really chaotic and tropic way, that's okay. So what am I talking about concretely? First, file naming protocols and folder organization what to call all of the video and digital assets that you will be creating as actual file names, and then where exactly to store them within your hard drive. That's one thing. Time management and calendaring, for lack of a better word. Yes, we have many videos on editorial calendar, uh, keeping track of your notes and so forth. This is a more holistic view of the idea that eventually you want to get to a place where you are tackling different elements necessary for your channel in a kind of systematic way, batching as much like activity as possible together, but also giving yourself a kind of weekly outlook where you know that in a normal week, on Monday you'll do this, on Tuesday you'll do this, on Wednesday you'll take a day off, whatever it might be, and you have clarity as to when you should be doing what. That's another thing. A third is keyboard shortcuts. You can go down the rabbit hole of keyboard shortcut YouTube tutorial videos. Our goal is not to reproduce all of those here, but I will point you in the direction of some resources, amazing resources, already out there on how to accelerate your workflow when it comes to software like Adobe Premiere, Illustrator, Photoshop, and a bunch of others. While you may think that keyboard shortcuts are for like hyper professionals, like people for whom this is their 24 seven job, the truth of the matter is, is that you are going to be doing the exact kind of things over and over and over again. And so if you can shave off just a few seconds, a few different operations for each of these repetitive tasks, your stamina will last longer. You will get frustrated less, fatigued less, you'll stay in the flow longer and you'll get stuff done faster. Overall, the quality of your work will go up and your sense of accomplishment will go up and your fatigue level, your, your desire to quit, your desire to give up will go down. A fourth thing is workspace setup. This could be both your desk and your office or wherever you do your work and your digital workspace. This might be the desktop of your computer. It might be the way that you have arranged the windows on Adobe Premiere or whatever video editing software you use, but it's also the layout of your office, your space. So again, these are things that we're doing deep dives in in other videos. This is more of an overview of the various workflows that you should strive to rationalize, kind of systematize, make more efficient incrementally over time, you will thank yourself for it. So let's carve off a piece of everything I just introduced to do a bit of a deeper dive. The first thing that I wanna talk about is file naming. This is something so easy to overlook where you, you're shooting video, you're shooting uh, photos on your digital camera, whatever it might be. Maybe you're doing interviews on Zoom, maybe you use Ecamm Live, and every one of these programs has a default file naming system, which basically produces a non-human readable kind of gobbledygook name. Uh, that is purely for the system itself. It's purely to make sure that the system doesn't ever, you know, produce the same file name more than once and overwrite itself. When you're in the thick of it, when you're filming video, when you're taking pictures, when you're pouring all of this energy, you know, in the small amount of time that you have, about the last thing in the world that you want to do is say, okay, stop everything. I need to go back over everything I just shot, click on it, change the file name, and move forward. Because it feels as if 
gosh, time is so precious. I've got this inspiration. I really should just be producing, producing, producing. There is truth to that. You do want to stay in the flow as long as you can. But I will tell you that after a day or certainly a week of shooting like this, you are going to hit a brick wall in the form of a big file folder full of incomprehensible file names that now suddenly you have to spend an enormous amount of time kind of in a forensic way going through all of them to figure out what the hell they were in the first place. So ironically, that little bit of time that you're saving on the front end multiplies and still has to get done on the tail end. It's sort of like a stitch in time saves nine. And if you don't do that kind of work, the real tragic possibility is that that file gets lost in the clutter, it gets accidentally deleted, you forget that it was even there in the course of doing an editing project and then the final video is produced and then you rediscover that there was this footage that you just lost track of. That is completely wasted time. That entire hour of shooting is lost, was meaningless. So it is valuable to tap the brakes every now and then and do some cleanup. Now here's the key. You really want to develop a file naming structure that is absolutely doctrinally consistent and that is rational for your purposes. And then on a technical level, we highly recommend that you develop file naming protocols that use no spaces in the file names. Ironically, the space, just a, you know, a space between words, is sometimes a little bit complex for computers to handle. There are, you know, basically computers don't like empty space. And so in order to have an empty space, there has to be a special character placed there. And so technically speaking, while the file name on your monitor might look like video about dad, in fact, it's video blah, 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 about blah, 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 dad. And what you want to do is produce a file naming structure such that the readable on-screen version and basically the encoded version is identical. You can do this either by getting rid of all spaces or by using either hyphens or underscores. So what are the things you definitely want to have in your file names? One thing is a short, and I mean short, description of whatever the file is about. If it's a video on a particular subject or an audio file on a particular subject, it is always worthwhile to have a very short description of what it is. A second is the production date of the file. So if you've done an interview on November 5th, 2021, I would include 2021-11-05 all together as an indication of when this happened. So as you can see, I recommend a four-digit year, two-digit month, two-digit day, even if it's the 5th of November, because it's going to be consistent. Um, it is going to be something that you can search back over very easily, and you will never kind of lose sight of when something was produced. If you are conducting interviews, I always include the name of the interviewee, again, with no spaces between the given name and the surname. And if you have multiple projects, meaning you're shooting videos or doing audio for a variety of projects, maybe you have a kind of project code baked into your file naming structures. And of course, you are more than welcome to have somewhat, you know, human unreadable codes that only you know. Let's say you have a project called uh, Baker's Dozen. It's a podcast about baking. Well, maybe your code for that is BD, and that's fine. You can use things that are mnemonic to keep the file name short, but what you want to make sure is that the sequence of your file name is always the same every time. So let's say you want to have project code, date of production, or maybe description of what's in there, interviewee if there is one, date of when it was created. Boom, 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 every single time. When you come back to that a week later, a month later, a year later, you are gonna have zero ambiguity about what this is. You can also include codes that indicate whether or not something is a screencast. Let's say you're doing a screencast tutorial and you have two videos, one of the talking head and one of the screen of wherever they're doing their business you can have screencast as something that you make it a point to include in the file name, or overhead shot if you're doing overhead shots, or B-roll if it is a B-roll footage uh, piece. You don't wanna make the file name 
ridiculously long, but it's a good idea to err on the side of a bit more description than less. And by all means, you cannot leave the file in its machine, you know, original IMG, ecam blah 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 zoom underscore blah 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 you do not want to leave your files in that format for any length of time because you will lose track of them and you will have to go back over and spend hours putting back the pieces of your hard drive so that's just one piece of this workflow that we're talking about that i think in this video it's worthwhile really pausing and doing a deep dive into. The second, and we will limit ourselves to just two, so we don't bite off more than we can chew for this video, is a filing system. And here I'm really referring to your file structure inside your hard drive. So really give thought to the kind of taxonomic architecture of your files. Let's say that you have a box folder or a Dropbox folder or a Google Drive folder, and you have this sort of you know, this master folder. Within that, maybe you then have it broken down by projects. Maybe you have various project folders. And within that, you might have raw footage where you're just the initial dumping ground of, of, of initially recorded video and audio. Or maybe you have a file folder on digital assets, just a file folder of still images and scans that you plan to incorporate into your video. It doesn't matter so much that you subscribe to a specific file folder structure, although I will show you mine in the course material, but rather that you develop one and then stick to it. Consistency in your own system is far more important than you choosing a canonical system that is used by videographers or whatever out there in the general public. Now, of course, if there are ideas out there, or techniques out there for how to organize your materials, you should take inspiration from them, especially from professionals, but spend less time trying to come up with the perfect filing system than one that you can stick to consistently, religiously. That's quite a lot. What your homework is for today is to download the course material, which is all about file naming protocols and file folder organization. What I'd like for you to do is to develop your preliminary file folder system. Try to figure out what are the variables that you're gonna add to every single one of your file names, and then try to you know test it out. Let's see what the length of it be, let's see what the protocol will be, and the goal here would be to save that document, save that like sample file name as a, a note in your notes program or as a, a simple text file, or maybe like even add it to your, your desktop so you can always see it, such that when you're saving new audio, new video, you don't have to go looking for it or try to remember it, you know, come up with memory. You can just go back and be like, okay, this is the protocol, this is the protocol, this is the protocol. And eventually, of course, it'll become muscle memory. The second piece of it has to do with your file folder system. I'm gonna give you a few, you know, starter set sample ideas for how one can organize a foldering system, one that's a bit more kind of complex and very, very, very subcategorized, and one that is much more streamlined. You can choose either one, you can come up with some hybrid of the two, but actually diagram out in a sort of tree diagram in the course materials we have provided what your workflow folder structure is going to be at least right now in your mind's eye. You can change it later, but eventually you're gonna want it to get it to a place where you can commit to it for the long term. See you in the next tutorial. Mm -hmm.